All righty, welcome everybody to our webinar presentation. I'm Trevor, and we are going to do a little bit of a follow-up on what we did the week prior um, where we talked about blog commenting. And I want to recap that a little bit, and then we're going we're gonna to do some more work just collectively here as a group. Um, for those of you guys who are here live with me, I'm going to put the topic right here. We're going to call it blog commenting. Um, first of all, tell me, explain to me what that, what is that strategy? When I say we're going to, we're going to implement a blog commenting campaign for our site, for marketing, essentially what does that mean? What am I doing as a web owner? And let's say for this example, um, we're going to be we're going to be promoting uptownpearl.com. Actually, you know what? We did that last week. Let's say this week we're going to be promoting uh, Financial Nut. So my other sites, right? Financialnut.com. Just to make it a little bit different as we talk about it tonight. So, so tell me about it. Blog commenting. What is it? I'm going to say, what is it? Question mark. Let's define it again. So, it's a it's a marketing strategy, right? Um, which, whenever we're talking about a marketing strategy, aren't we just talking about, uh, you know, we're trying to get people to our website, right? That's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get eyeballs on the website. Um, let's see. So we're we're making a comment on a blog in hope. So I'm gonna say we're making blog comments. Okay, what's a blog? We talked about that a little bit last week. We'll look at some more examples tonight, but we're making comments on a blog and not not just any kind of comments, right? What what kind of, what kind of comments do we have to make? Um you already said it, Linda, you said a valid um maybe a valid comment or yeah, you know, that's it, Bill, a relevant comment. Let's write let's put that up there. Let's say a you know, a relevant comment. Something something that's related to the material. Last week I tried to do it on this site. Let's see if this site works. SaltCityHoops.com. Last week it wasn't working very well. Oh, it's working a little bit now. Oh, just kidding. No, it's not. It freezes every time I go to it. Oh, okay. No matter. I just want to see if that site would work for us this time. Um, yeah, so you're making a relevant comment, and, and the marketing part of it is when you can post your link in the comment, right? This is this is the critical part. Post your link in the comment, right? Your link in this case for me would be, you know, financialnut.com. So I'm I'm basically using somebody else's blog, somebody else's website, and a blog is typically informational. I'm finding an article on it, and I'm writing a comment in response to that article because that's the that's the big characteristic out about blogs you can you can make a comment and in that comment box I'm hoping to put my website link so that a I can well let's talk about that what's the benefit again what's the benefit of a a, a good blog comment you guys tell me why why are we doing it now we we say this is the benefit right here, trying to get people to our website. It's a marketing strategy, but how does how does that work when you leave a comment? Okay, so one, Bill, you said it, creating links, okay? So it creates a link back to our site. And and somebody somebody help me understand this real quick. If I get a link, how does that actually help me? What does a link actually do for me? It does it sort of does two things, doesn't it? Aren't there like two main benefits to a link that we always talk about? Number one, Google, right? Google well, Google counts those links and, and the more links we have, the higher we'll rank, right? That's one of the big ones. Yeah, and and, and Pat, someone may click on it and visit your website. Right. So we may get I'm gonna call it a direct click 
or you know we could call it referral traffic okay so somebody could see that link and then even if they never click on it that's the cool thing about blog commenting somebody could never click on it but you still have a link that's pointing back to you so it could help you indirectly get traffic through ranking higher in google um but sometimes you can get lucky and you can you can do uh you can get people to click on your link through blogs that uh that'll send you a lot of direct traffic right so those are two pretty big benefits and they're easy and i i guess really this is my favorite part about it it really is easy to get blog links. And that's why I teach it to you guys right now because you don't have to be some sort of crazy expert internet marketer with all sorts of like marketing strategies that are really unique and only certain people know about. No, this is, this is pretty basic stuff that anybody can do. Um, but it has to be done right. And that's why we're, we're spending another week talking about it a little bit. So, all right, so guys, to review, how do I, okay, so let's, let's look at my site that I'm trying to promote tonight. So our example site for the night is um, financialnut.com. Financialnut.com is a, it's a blog in and of itself. It's, a, it's an informational website. This website focuses on making money off of advertising. That's how I make money on this. And it's a site that's all about personal finance investment finance, um, saving money, making more money, it has anything to do with money, that's what this site would focus on, okay? So my question to you guys is how do I go about, what would be, if, if I'm, if I'm going to spend an hour tonight doing blog commenting, and, and this is the site that I'm promoting, what's step one? What do I got to do first? I've just decided... I'm going to spend an hour tonight. I know we're not going to spend that much time in the webinar, but we'll say I'm sitting down and I'm doing marketing for the night. I'm going to spend an hour on it. Um, where, where do I start, right? Where, where should I, where, what should I do in essence if I want to get this thing rolling? So, okay. So you guys are saying find a blog, right? I can't do anything until I discover a blog. So, okay, so I got to find a blog, and I like what, I like what uh, Robert J., I like what you just said, find a relevant blog. Find something that's related to my niche. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to look for a personal finance blog. Okay? I'm just going to Google search it. I think this is probably the easiest way to do it. I'm going to look for a personal finance blog, and I'm going to see if I can find some related material here. So what's this first link right here? Top personal finance blogs. Okay. Um, so this looks like a website that's sort of like a phone book of finance blogs. I'm going to say like college maybe. It's not really showing me anything here, is it? Retirement. Yeah, this isn't really showing me anything. Let me go to all PF posts. Maybe that maybe that'll show me something. Nope. I don't see anything. It's like this site's broken or something. All right. So nothing here on wise bread. Let's back out of that. All right, back to Google we go. Ten personal finance blogs worth reading. Okay, this looks like another little list of blogs here. Um, okay, well, let's look through these ones they recommend. Get Rich Slowly is one. Let's go to Get Rich, Get Rich Slowly. Uh, this is one we saw last week, actually, funny enough. All right, so here's a blog. Now, guys, tell me real quick, how do I identify that it's actually a blog? What am I looking for here? What are some characteristics of a blog? How do I know this isn't just some normal website? Dates. Okay, dates of an article post, which we've got here. 
Um, authors, we've got Donna Friedman who wrote this. It's in an article form. Sometimes there's advertising on the site. Maybe it's not necessarily selling a specific product. It, so usually look for sites that are just made up of articles that are date stamped. Comments, that's a dead giveaway because blogs often uh, offer comments, right? So let's just do this first one up here. This was published on April 2nd. It's called We're Eating Our House. Now at this stage, this is a related blog, first of all. I mean, I have a finance blog. This is a finance blog. Don't you think it'd be a really good idea to post a link here? Because if I had, a, if I had a, my link here on this, it sounds like this is a very popular blog as well. Um, and, and so I could probably get some really good direct traffic from this, right? This would be a great blog. Now, if this were a blog on something totally unrelated, I probably wouldn't waste my time. I want to spend my time on blogs that are related, right? Um, Pat, that's a, good, that's a good idea. She says you can usually know it's a blog by looking at the URL up here at the very top, the web address, www.getrichslowly.org slash blog right okay so we're we're all clear we're definitely on a blog here all right so let's read through this real quick I know you guys probably can't read this very well because it's kind of small I'm gonna zoom in here um, I, I tend to I don't like read it word for word because I don't have time to, to do that all the time you know what I mean like I kind of want to skim through this and, and get the gist of it so I'm going to skim through and just kind of figure out what this is about. I need to know what's in the article first before I try to comment on this thing. Food is often the budget item with the most wiggle room, especially when it comes to meals out. According to the USDA, 43.1% of our food dollars are actually spent on items consumed away from home. That's an interesting stat. But you don't have to quit eating altogether. Trying this might be just as counterproductive as trying to quit any other habit in an all or nothing fashion. Instead, scale back gradually. Start with dishes that are simple to prepare. Okay, so it's basically giving me tips on how to save money on food con consumption. Um, oh, it's not just that, it's other things. Watching, our, watching your dollars. Plenty of people have cut the cable in favor of alternatives like Netflix and Hulu, consider joining them, okay? The average person spends between forty-five and sixty-eight dollars a year on music downloads. Okay, so this is kind of like a general post about, I guess, ways to save money. Where, like you said, Bill, where to find extra cash in your budget? I think we're all probably guilty of some of this stuff, right? I know I eat out way more than I should. If I wanted to save decent money, I'd probably just, you know, pack a lunch every day. But I just sometimes I don't have time for it. But they're 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 offering some suggestions here. So I I've got the gist of the article, right? I could have spent 10 minutes like really reading this word for word and going in depth, but if our goal is here, if if our goal here is to like get out there and post as many comments as we can, like I'm not I'm not I don't have time for that. I got to get onto my next blog and get another comment posted. And and sometimes what I do is I may really skim through this content really fast. And then I skim through some of the comments that are already being made, and I actually get involved in the conversation. Maybe we'll do that here. A lot of comments here from people just kind of saying their own thing. And you'll notice that these are these are all approved comments, right? Um, in fact, I wonder if my comment got approved last week. I think I left one on this blog. We'll have to maybe look that up. Anyway. So here, here's a spot. See, I can either reply to some of these comments. Like I could, I could read over this comment right here. Um, maybe that's what I'll do. This isn't true of all blogs, but on this one, I can actually reply to one of the people who've already commented. So let me read this one. This person, the, uh, this lady Jen right here, right? 
She says, under cooking up savings, I first read, but you don't have to quit eating altogether. Phew, so glad I still, so glad I still get to eat. Seriously, great article. We have two kids and are, and are good about staying in to eat. Helps that we live in Seattle with big sales tax and high food costs. I still feel like we could be doing much better with our grocery bills, and I'm constantly working on that. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a way to relate to this. I've got a couple of kids, too, so I'm going to reply to this person, Jen. Okay, and now it's going to take me down here to this comment section, and I'm just going to put in Trevor. I've got my email, and I, this time I'm going to put in my website right here is financialnut.com, right? That's my website link. Now, let me ask you guys a question here. Financial.nut.com is a, is a link or a URL to what page of my site? What page am I advertising in my, in my link here? It's my homepage, right? Do I always have to put my homepage link? I don't. You're exactly right. I definitely don't have to put in my homepage link every time. I could advertise, and that's really what this is. It's an advertisement for myself. I could advertise one of my other pages. Now, under what circumstance would I use another page? Why wouldn't I use my homepage here? Why would I change up the page? There's a couple of different reasons why we might. I want to see what you guys come up with. Yeah, specific or related to this content. Now, if Financial Nut had something that was related to like saving money on food consumption or saving money on your direct TV or um, What's the other one? Dish. So saving money on DirecTV or Dish by instead switching over to Netflix or Hulu like they suggested. Maybe I've got some content related to that. It's much smarter to link the related content than just the generic homepage. Plus, I like on a website, on, on an entire website, I like all of my links not just to go to the homepage because if all of my links just go to my homepage, sure, it makes my homepage it makes my home page really strong. But what about my other pages? They they need to benefit from links too. I need to get some links into my sub pages. So I, in this case, I don't really have something related, so I'm just going to link my home page. But anyway, that's, uh, that's something to consider. Link related content if you can, for sure. And it'd be really cool if I had, some, if I had done some research or something. And I had like this really great article that had some interesting stats about eating out or whatever. I could, not only could I put a link here under the website field, but I could be like, hey, by the way, I found this really interesting article. Whoops. Interesting article about eating out on USA Today. And then I like, I link the article. But hopefully it would be on my website and I could put in the link or whatever. So the link doesn't always have to go right here in the in the link field. You can also put it in the comment section too. But in this case, I don't have anything like that. <clears throat> I could have ma I could have not even read the article and I probably still could have responded to this person Jen here. I'm going to say something like um sometimes I'll do the at symbol when I'm when I'm talking to somebody, I'll I'll put at Jen because that's who this is this is being directed towards. And I'm going to say I completely know what you mean. We live, I'm going to say my family and I live out in Utah, so the cost of living isn't nearly as bad as it is in Seattle. However, we have two kids as well and we constantly constantly fall into that trap of buying kids meals that are grossly overpriced i hate that exclamation mark 
I've already probably written enough here, but sometimes I, you know, right? Like, is there any question if, if the author or the owner of Get Rich Slowly, if they saw my com comment here, would they, would they look at this and be like, oh, this guy's just trying to advertise? If I've got a comment like this, isn't it pretty clear that I actually read the article and I'm like, I'm participating in the discussion, right? There's no way they're going to, there's no way that they're going to not take my comment. I'm adding to the conversation. I'm providing some value here. So they're going to keep it. And I, you know, I may have directed Jen over to my site, honestly, because I'm responding back to her. <clears throat> she may read my comment and then click on my name and go to my website. I mean, at least then I'd, I would have gotten a visitor to my site. But what's even more valuable is, of course, this link. It's a link on a really popular blog that thousands of people read. So I'm going to go ahead and submit comment. And there we go. There's my comment right there. I, I don't know if this is automatically approved or not. It might be in, moder it might be in moderation, um, but it's showing up as live. So here's what's cool. I mean, there it is right there. There's my comment. Notice how my name is the link. So I've got Trevor linked to Financial Nut, and uh, I'm participating in the discussion. So that was a successful comment right there. Now, I know that took us the better part of 15 minutes to, to get through, but had I not been doing it with all of you guys, and you're exactly right, Sam, I deleted more than I actually typed when I was writing that comment. If you're not a great typer, you might be a little slower at this, but it's a great time to learn how to type a little faster, right? You don't have to leave these long, detailed comments either, but you've got to make sure you're adding to the conversation, right? So there you go. Um, so let's head up to another site. Oh, yeah, do you guys remember? Okay, so last week we, we commented on one. Didn't we? Didn't we comment on Get Rich Slowly? Um, I'm looking for, oh, it was this one, wasn't it? How to save money on dental bills. We submitted that comment and I was like, hey, I think maybe we'll get accepted. Let's scroll down in these comments and see if we actually, yep, there it is right there, guys. How about that? Comment number 31. There's my link. Now, let me ask you guys a question. How do I know if somebody has clicked on this link and come to my site? Is there any way for me to know that? Like I've had this, this comment was up since uh, March 26th. Is there any way I can figure out if somebody's come to the site? Yeah. Um, Linda, you said Google Analytics. Absolutely. So let's try it real quick. Um, Google.com. Let me log into my analytics on this site. Uh, let's see. Google.com slash analytics. Now, if you guys don't know what analytics is, not to worry. We'll be covering that with you. Um, but a few weeks ago, we, we talked about Google Analytics. Somebody tell me, what, what is Google Analytics? Real quick. What am I talking about? What's Google Analytics? I'm going to check. Like I'm going to log into my com or into my uh Google Analytics account for Financial Nut and I'm going to see if anybody came. Somehow I doubt it because it was one comment. But let's just let's just see. I'm going to go log into my account here if I can remember my login. Nope. There we go. Um, you guys hear me okay? I haven't really been talking. I've just been logging into my account. 
So Google Analytics, guys, is my, it's my traffic tracker. It tracks how many visitors I'm getting to my site every day. I'm, I just logged into Financial Nuts here, and you can see this line graph showing me. I'm getting a little over 100 visitors a day most days. This was a good day on Thursday the 26th. I got 268. Funny enough, was that not the day that we submitted the comment? So I wonder if that had anything to do with the, you know, with a, with a better comment. I wonder if that sent me any traffic. So we can figure that out. So what I would do is I would change the date range here. And I'm going to look at, and I, I wouldn't recommend you guys do this with every comment. I'm just going to see if anything actually happened on the 26th. There we go. I've changed the date. This is March 26th. Um, I'm going to come down here to acquisition on the left. I'm going to look at all traffic. I'm going to look at referrals. Referrals is just you know, sites that actually referred my site over to them. And I don't see anything here, not not anything specific to get rich slowly. But it could have happened not just on the 26th, right? So like somebody could have came to my site from that comment ever since the 26th. So I'm going to do the whole week from the 26th until today. I'm going to look at my referrals and see if I have anything from get rich slowly. Mm. Nope, I don't see anything. All right, so let me ask you guys a question then. I got a total of no visitors from Get Rich Slowly um, because of that comment. Okay, so was that was that a waste of time then? Because <laughs> if I haven't gotten any visitors now, I don't know if I will get any direct traffic from that comment. So did I just waste 10 minutes uh, last week commenting on Get Rich Slowly? What do you guys think? It's been a week. Clearly, clearly it hasn't sent me any traffic. Sadly, right? Yeah, and I, some of you guys are catching on to this. Remember. What are our two benefits, right? What are our two benefits to this whole thing? We're also creating links. So even though even though I didn't get a, a click, Google can find that link and give me some credit for it. And overall, it can help my site gain more trust with Google. Blog comments aren't, aren't typically a high quality, high value link. So often you have to get a lot of them from a lot of different places for it really to add up to much of anything. But nonetheless, it's still a link. And guess what, guys? It's only been a week. If that blog post gets a little more popular or gets shared out there online, my comment is there. And as that blog post gets traffic over time, I could get traffic from that comment. Just because I haven't seen any after a week doesn't mean it wouldn't happen. Okay? So there's still that value behind it. Good. Is that making sense? Questions about that, guys? Yeah, Bill, sorry. I don't know why I'm going in and out for you. It's probably your internet connection because I, I think most people are able to, are, are getting the audio okay. All right, so this is an interesting question. Robert, I appreciate this. So Robert says, do people know to click on your name for the link? Wouldn't it help? to list the link in the comments. So in other words, let's go back here. Let's go back to get rich slowly. Let's go back to the blog. Okay, you'll notice that all of these blog posts, um, you know, notice how the link for most people here is it's underlined in blue. So sorry, I'm, I know I'm scrolling around a, a bunch, but see number link number one or comment number one, Mrs. Frugal Woods. Um, that's a link to her site. Comment number two, that's a link to a website. Comment number three, it's not underlined, so there's no link. 
comment number four, you've got Nick at Millionaires Giving Money. So the answer is, you know, would it make sense? Would it be nice to have your link actually show up in the text of the com of the comment? It would, Robert, no question. But the hard part about that is, if you just blatantly drop your link there, like I guess in my comment down here, where did mine go? Let me find it. Yeah, right here. If I just dropped financialnut.com at the bottom of this comment, it would have looked like this, right? Like, it would have looked like this, and, and then I would have put HTTP www.financialnut.com. That usually looks a little more spammy to, to owners of blogs. Unless that comment or unless that link is directly related to something I said in the comment, a lot of a lot of blog owners that see stuff like that, they'll just delete the comment because they're assuming you're just blatantly advertising your own stuff. And I would have been there because I didn't financialnut.com has nothing to do with my comment right now. So if I just threw that into the into the post, um I I run the risk of probably getting my comment deleted. Now, if I had a really sort of like related piece of content. And as I was typing out the, the, the response that I had here, um, if I had something like some statistics on, you know, how much extra we spend on buying kids meals for our kids and how that's so detrimental to our finances because it's such a waste, we could just share with our kids or whatever. If I had like a piece of that content on my site or on a blog of my own, then I could work that into the con content and, I, and, I, and, the, and it would get approved. But I don't have anything related here. So no, in this case, I would definitely just leave my comment in or my, my link up here in the website section, if that makes sense. But in, in the ideal situation, Robert, absolutely. I, you know, and I've even seen some people that'll go and if they've got a popular blog that they're commenting on, they'll go write a piece of content related to it and they'll post it in the comment section and it'll, it'll get kept there because it is related. So, and I mean, that's a, that's another strategy for another day, but yeah, it is better if you can have it there. But you can see what people do though. Here's a good example. Uh, let me go back up to, where was that one? Nick, this one right here. Check out what this guy did. This is, this is a smart idea. He put Nick at millionaires giving money. I would look at that and be like, what's millionaires giving money? And I would click on it and sure enough, it's his own blog. You see that? That link just took me to his website. So he's essentially branding himself in that comment, if that makes sense. He's branding his site. So I could have done something like Trevor Instead of just my name, Trevor, here in my comment right here, um, I could have done Trevor at finance, Financial Nut or Trevor at Finance Blog. And, and that would have branded my comment just a little bit better. Does that, guys, is that unclear? Does that make sense why that, that could be valuable? Branding your own sort of name as the link. Does that make sense to you guys? Tell me if that, if you're not following. I've actually done that a lot myself. I've done this kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> um, let me read this, Jeff. You say, if you have added your link to a website in a comment section and it got thrown out, does Google view it as a bad link or negative towards you? Um, the answer is they, Google never evaluates it because they never know you had the link in the first place. And if they, if they found that you had the link temporarily and then it got deleted, it wouldn't be negative at all. So there's nothing negative. You lose that link on the site because it looks too spammy. It won't hurt you in Google. Nope, not at all. So that's not something you have to worry about. Okay. So guys, I understand we've spent most of our time once again on this same blog. Um, let's just click on to another one real quick. We'll do a quick example this time. Uh, wise bread. That was the one we just saw a minute ago. Wisebread.com. 
And I'm just going to click on the first article I see. And I, again, I can I know it's a blog. It's got all those same characteristics. This only has one comment on it. How much should you have saved for retirement by 30, 40, or 50? Um, okay, how much money should you have put aside for retirement before you hit your milestone birthdays? Before you turn 30, so it gives some suggestions what you should do before you turn 30. Um, before you turn 40, what you should do. Before you turn 50, what you should do. Okay. And then I'm going to read this last part. Paying yourself first should hurt a little. You may not be able to squeeze blood from a turnip, but you can probably find more money in your budget to meet these goals. Okay. All right. Well, here's the comment section below here. Um, I'm going to add a comment. I'm going to say, I really agree with that very last paragraph. Saving and budgeting really should be somewhat painful to be effective. If it doesn't hurt, it's probably not enough. Not enough. That's always been my motto. Thanks for the post. Okay. Guys, rate me here. Good enough? Do I need more or less there? Was that a good enough comment? I'm going to put in the little caption number here so they can make sure I'm not a robot. Put in my name. This time I'm going to be Trevor at Financial Nut. Oh, whoops. I spelled that wrong. Finan. Should not. And then I'm going to put in my website, financialnut.com. I always put in the HTTP colon slash slash just to be careful. Yeah, good enough. <clears throat> I agree. I mean, if I, this clearly does not look like a spammy comment. I mean, I read it. I, I didn't read it word for word. I skimmed through it, right? But I caught something in the article that I could comment on, and I did it. Now, what if my comment looked like this? Great article. I really agree with some of your main points. I think you do a great job, and I'll certainly come reading again. Thanks. Okay, good enough or too spammy? Way too spammy, right? No, like this kind of thing gets deleted all the time. This will never get accepted, I promise you. Definitely not good enough. Okay, I'm going to replace it with what I had. There we go. Um, and then I can post my comment, okay? So anyway, I, we'll, we'll, I don't know. We, we should maybe do some more practice on this because I've got some more things that, that make sense with blog commenting, but after having discussed this now for a couple of webinars, I think you should go wild on this thing. I mean, you should be able to get out there. When I was doing this with, with Financial Nut, I, I'd do it for 20, 25 minutes a day for like six months, and I got on there and I was commenting like crazy. I commented up a storm, and I still maintain most of the success of the marketing of my Financial Nut site um, came as a result of my work doing blog commenting. I really believe that. It helped me in Google. It helped me learn my industry. It got me a lot of direct traffic. It, I made some connections and had some networking opportunities because I met people through blog commenting, if you can imagine. And even though the link value isn't as good, or it's not worth as much as it once was, back in the day when I was doing it, um, there was a lot more link value in doing blog commenting. It's not as great now. But even that said, it still has value. I just think it's a really great strategy for you guys to work on. Um, all right, so let's finish up. Let me, let me finish up by answering some of these last questions. But, um, Patricia, you ask, does it help to ask a question in your comment? It sure can. Like I've, I've opened up some interesting dialogue in a comment section where I've asked a question or formulated a question in my post and people responded back to it and yeah so you can ask a question that's not a bad idea um 
you asked, should they all be guest posts, Bill? Like, yeah, some, some blogs require you to register to comment. So um, I typically recommend in a blog commenting campaign, you set up a different email account or comment with an email that you don't mind getting a bunch of spam to. Because every once in a while, like your email gets out there and people start spamming you a little bit. So uh, yeah, you can register, but use, do, do an email. Don't you do like your main business email where you're getting your order notifications too or whatever. Because you'll, you'll wish you hadn't because you'll get a bunch of spam. That's that's my advice anyway. So that's it, guys. Um, you need to do blog commenting at some point. You, and, and if you want to work it into your regular marketing schedule, go ahead and do it. Do it for 15 minutes a day or, or whatever it takes. And I get questions all the time where it's like, well, how much blog commenting should I do? And the answer is always as much as it takes. You know, do this in conjunction with directories and other link building strategies for as long as it takes for you to actually get real legitimate traffic to your website. It's always the answer. I mean, I blog commented for six months aggressively and that's what it took to get my marketing going with one of my sites. I mean, but that's, that's cause I made it my main strategy. I mean, it may not take you guys nearly as long, but the answer is do it as much as it takes. And the steps are simple. Do a Google search, find blogs out there. They're everywhere. There's thousands of them for any niche. I guarantee you won't have a problem finding them. And, and unload a bunch of comments and be smart about the way you do it. Check your analytics. See what, see what blogs are sending you traffic. Go back and comment more on the blogs that are sending you a bunch of direct traffic. Um, there's a lot of good opportunities here. So I probably will leave this topic for a little while. We may come back to it and chat a little bit more, but I feel good enough about what we've talked about. I think you guys should have plenty to run with. Um, okay. Yeah, let's finish up. We, I, I would do one more, Bill. We're just about out of time. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like your point, though. When you think you're done doing a blog commenting, do another one. Just do one more, right? Absolutely. As many blog comments as you can get. All right, guys, we'll uh, leave any more questions you've got there in the comment box. I'm going to turn off the recording. Um, for those of you guys who are watching this recorded, once again, thanks for coming. And learning a little bit more about internet marketing with me in tonight's webinar. We'll see you next time.